Hello YouTube, this is Shirley426, and today we have the review of the HG Brady Hound from the Kyokai Senki series. Now this was a really surprising release for me. Now, number one, I was aware that they were going to release this kit. However, um, basically Gundam Base Korea has their own blog uh, where we can check, and every week they would update like their upcoming new products or new releasing products. So I checked that list and this was not included, including the store carrier. The store carrier is the green helicopter slash jet thing that can carry these guys around. Um, however, so yesterday I went to a certain mall that had the Gundam base that I usually go to. I went there to buy some shoes and then I also visit them, uh, visit the Gundam base without any, like, you know, anything in mind and they were selling those two stuff. So I got them right away. So it's either the list that I saw was an error, so they maybe later updated it and I didn't see it. But either way, I'm very happy to see and build this kit. So first of all, right off the bat, I would like to mention this kit has is really, really well made. Bandai is really acing the Kyokai Senki stuff because this thing has, like the color separation is almost perfect. So you'll get into that later. Alright, so as usual, let's get on to the review. So first of all, the Brady Hound is basically used by the military force from the series. It's used by a specific military force, I would like to point that out. And these were first seen when they were uh, when the military force was was fighting the Amime Ghost for the first time. To be more specific, the Amime Ghost Mark II. Uh, the one with the forearms and then the one with that could shoot wires around, so yeah. It was, uh, it was first seen Then there was four units of these, technically three of the brown ones, and then there is a blue one that was used by the commander, which is also releasing in the future. Uh, not only the color is blue, but it has some diff it has a different blade, and then the head top head section, it has a slight different design. So we will be seeing that, and I, I will be definitely getting that as well. Alright, so other than that, what you get, of course, is obviously you, you have a multi-purpose hand kind of thing. So these are the hands that we saw uh, that were kind of included with the Amime Ghost. These are kind of similar to, the, those, to those hands, but they also have a gimmick. And then, once again, we also have some combat knives. Uh, the manual doesn't really mention the exact names, they're just called knives. So, yeah, so they can be stored like under the arm, around the armpit area. I think that's the best way to explain that, but other than that, so we get those. And then the other stuff you should be getting are these. So number one, other than the multi-purpose hands, we get the open style hands for these. So nothing too special here. We get a set and then we get a blank head form. So here uh, in the series, we you might actually seen these before where when the Brady Hounds are not in use, they, they have their like eyes closed up. So uh, this is for that aspect as well. So these are all, so these lines here are st stickers. So that's three stickers. And then the current one I'm using are the open one. So that's another three stickers. So that's a total of six stickers for now. But once again, we also get the, the rifle. Once again, it doesn't really mention the, a specific name. It's just called rifle. So once again, pretty interesting design here. So usually when we see a rifle, we would expect the handle to be uh, around here or on the back. But in this case, this one's actually on the side. So uh, kind of like, I don't know, the design kind of reminds me of those one of those gray, um, the HG Gray's rifles. But once again, uh, once again, and we have two, two sensors slash camera uh, stickers on here. So that's a total of eight stickers and that's it. That's all you get. For stickers so here is the sticker sheet so I, obviously we get three six for the head and then two for the weapons and that is all everything else is color separated so it that is very very good now once again today I was I was trying to originally plan to uh, to do the review together with the store carrier but once again after looking at the store carrier instruction manual that thing deserves its own um, review so that will be done next week all right, so uh, let's see what we got here. So let's start with the head. So definitely the design is a little bit unique to the point where it's kind of like kind of different from your typical uh, mobile suit from Gunpla. So once again, here we have the head. As I mentioned, uh, these are these each are, are them are individual lines of stickers. So yeah, make sure you kind of. Uh, how should I say? How should I say this? Apply this in the correct position. So um, this thing is on a ball joint, so you can look up and then down that much as well. And then technically, you can kind of twist them left and right because it is on a ball joint. So once again, if you want to swap out heads to make it into the inactive mode, you you technically have to. Oops, nope, there we go. So you have to actually pull. Uh, according to the manual, you have to pull this off and then that reveal and then pull this out to reveal the ball joint. And then you have to replace the piece with the other piece that I mentioned here. So uh, let me do that right now just to give out the reference. 
there we go you slap that on and then there you go now once again like all other Kyo Kai Senki series um Max, these, this thing does have like a, a folding up storage mode, but once again, I think I'll mention that in the store carry review because that, that mode is pretty much meant for that. So, all right, so that's that for the head. Now, despite how the body looks like, it may look like it has an ab crunch because of that round body, but no, it doesn't have an ab crunch, but it does have a side to side movement. I know it, it does sound a little bit awkward, but yeah, that's just the way how it is. And then moving the body 360 is possible. Despite all the stuff going on on the top body, 360 is possible. All right, and then so let's look at the let's look at the like how should I say this the shoulder area. So uh, there are some moving parts, but uh, just to point out, this part right over here that looks like some sort of a jet engine is called the hover unit. This is basically to speed up the unit. So there's there are a few moving parts. Number one, you can move this entire piece together, which moves the arm together. So you do have a shoulder movement that can go forward and backward, or you can just move the shoulder part because it, it is on a separate ball joint. So you can go that way as well. So this does kind of increase the range movement of the arm a little bit despite how bulky it looks like uh, now and then you still have because it's uh, the arm is on a ball joint you can rotate the arm 360 the shoulder is connected to the arms so no need to worry about this part the one the part with the wings um, and then the lower arm the arm itself can go 360 like that and then you do have a nice bend although it's not it's it goes a little bit more than 90 degrees so it is enough for the design and you still have your ball jointed hands here and going to the side now because of the shoulder armor design i don't think you can go that much because once again the armor plate is blocking the way and this part does not move that much upwards so i think just without pure force this is just as far as i can go of course if you use the waist section to move it to the side you can go make them go up a little bit more but once again i don't think you'll be there's many uses for that as well if even though it went 90 degrees upwards and then as you can see here are the combat knives that are dangling under the armpit area so yeah these are kind of attached you can take it out and there you go this is one of the most longest combat knives I've, I've ever seen in a mech but still these are looking good now the hands here are kind of interesting so in order so you can see there's not many clearance in the hand there so you can't really hold a weapon but now the manual mentions that this the, the hand has a med uh three modes number one is the one with the finger so you fully open up that's one mode here's another mode where it's used as a fist or slash knuckle so in order to hold something you need to have you, you can slide down the knuckle here so you can slide it down and this itself works as a knuckle as well as a knuckle type weapon and now because it, you slide it down there is now enough clearance to hold any weapon including the gun here so you can now slide in the hand oops sorry about that you can slide in the combat knife into the hand with no problem as well. I I haven't checked with the Amaim Ghost hand, but I might need to check this one out just in case if it has the same gimmick. But if I remember correctly, there's a low chance on that. So yeah, and because of and it holds it very well. So it's not shaky, it doesn't fall off. So really satisfied with that. Alright, there we go. So pretty interesting gimmick, and as you can see the knife is kind of well it's hanging there it's attached there it's a pretty firm connection and you can move it up and down as well to change position all right so that's done uh one thing i've noticed <coughs> noticed is that the front skirt or kind of a front skirt this part is like on a kind of like a how should i say uh yeah is it it's only on a peg here and there's no locking mechanism onto it so when you're moving the kit you might accidentally move these parts up and down like that so just be aware of that aspect and you should be good to go and then we have the uh, side skirts that are connected as I believe ball joints. Yeah, these are ball joints So no need to worry about them popping off easily and then they can move up and down and then rotate them on their own So no need to worry the back skirt uh, In this mode, it's just like this but for the transformation slash storage mode You have to you can pull this up and then move it up like this. This is just a one of those uh, Process that you need to do when you're doing it going into the storage mode all right, now let's look at the legs here. The legs are pretty well made as well. So number one, you get a nice size wall going on here, and then you can go, well, when it's like this, there's not much space, but you can kind of extend it, open it up, and go more if you want to do so. And then forward, not, not a big issue. Of course, there is the front skirt problem, and then the armor design is colliding in the way so not as much you can you can't really go as much as the how the back goes but once again because of the structure you can go to the side 90 degrees so that's pretty well done and there is this gimmick where you, you these uh yeah 
<laughs> this may look like a side piece, but it's actually connected to the knee, so which is why it moves together here. And this also does serve an interesting purpose in the storage mode. Uh, so yeah, bend-wise, we get a pretty decent bend. Of course, <laughs> because of the design, it doesn't really... Sh you, you might get slightly confused on the design, but it has a re really nice bend going on here. All right, and then the feet are actually fully ball jointed feet, and I would like to mention there is no poly caps on the on these kits, so these are all plastic ball joints. So you get a nice pivot going on here, and since it is on a ball joint, you can go forward and backward like that, and then you can just go 360. And then the on the feet here, we have these claws going on here. These are all like extra, you know, extra standing points, and then you can kind of fold them inside. But this is more for the transformation, which I will show in the store carrier review as well. All right, so we've seen the basics of the kit. So articulation is really well done. And as you can see, the color here, the brown, the yellow, the uh, the sand color, and the gray, everything is color separated. So they did a really good job on the design. And then I really like the fact that this giant, the body entire section is like some sort of a, some sort of a jet booster unit at the same time. So really interesting design here. All right, so we've seen the basics of the kit. So I'll be right back with some demonstrations. Okay, I'm back. So here we have the first demonstration here. Here I wanted to show you guys that uh, to show the fact that the arm can actually reach for both knives that are currently stored into the main body. So here you can either reach towards the one that you can that's on the opposite side or you can kind of just reposition uh, your arm. Uh, let me just do that to just to just basically reach towards the uh, one that's close to the your actual arm here so you can you can kind of do both ways if you want to do so and then here we have the rifle that's currently onto the arm onto the hand so it's a pretty simple connection here all you need to do is just extend the knuckle guard like the one i show you guys with the knife and just plug it in here now of course if there's one kind of uh that might bother a few people is that when you do this compared to the combat knives the handle here seems a little bit more uh, you know less fat compared to the to the knife so it does it does feel a little bit wobbly unless this weapon is actually meant for multiple units so which is why it's not really dedicated to this hand but once again that it, that might feel a little bit awkward but still it gets the job done and once again because of the design where the handle is actually next to the gun it has a really unique vibe vibe here of course the only problem that you might face is that if you want to have it onto the other hand that may look a little bit awkward because there's no way to attach it to the uh, the opposite side and then also once again i forgot to mention when showing the rifle is that you also can have the option to take out the magazine out i believe this is the magazine so it's a pretty cool design here if you ask me uh and then yeah and they do mention that you can take this part off but in the manual it doesn't really mention what this is so i'm just going to assume this is kind of like a some sort of a grenade launcher uh thing going on here because I might need to check, recheck that scene where they're finding the Amime Ghost, but maybe that is a, that might be a grenade launcher or something else. All right, so we've seen the basics. So I think there's only one thing left to show. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here, finally, we have the common knife pose. I kind of wanted to do the strike Gundam pose going on here, but still, uh, I really like these combat knives because of the fact that they are long, and then you have no problems holding them upside down from the hands. Now, technically, the hands, it's really hard to, t I don't think there is an upside down in terms of kit-wise, but still, uh, you can use these knives in various ways, and I think you're, you're going to enjoy not only the kit, but the equipment that comes with it. Now, once again, as I mentioned before, uh, next week I'll be reviewing the store carrier and then I'll, I'll be also showing you guys like this mode as well on the image where it's a very simple transformation all you need to do is just pretty much fold the legs backwards and fold the feet down and you're good to go so once again we'll be showing that on next week anyway that's pretty much it for the review this was the review of the HG Brady Hound if you guys got any questions or requests leave a comment below I still have more stuff to buy and build and make reviews out so please stay tuned until then see you guys next time